We're closing out our series today on how to set up a saltwater aquarium with episode five, maintenance. Jumping right into our daily tasks, the first thing you'll need to do is feed your fish and cleanup crew. In the morning, I feed a few BRS pellets for the two clownfish, probably around 10 to 15 in total, and then I feed my three shrimp, five shrimp pellets total. In the afternoon, I thaw a cube of Akari mysis shrimp and feed about a third of it. To make sure the food doesn't just go straight into the filter sock, I turn off my return pump and wave maker for 15 minutes during feeding. It's really easy to overfeed a small tank, so err on the side of feeding too little and use your weekly water test to judge if you need to adjust how much you're feeding. Daily task number two, refill the tank with filtered water. Every day, fresh water is going to evaporate from your tank, and if we don't replace it, not only will the tank get saltier and saltier, but eventually the return pump will also run dry. So, once a day, add enough fresh filtered water, not salt water mind you, so that the water height in the return pump chamber reaches the top of the baffle. Eventually you're going to have to leave town for a few days, so when that happens you'll need to pick up some sort of auto top off unit which automates the process. Daily task number three, check the water temperature. Super easy, just take a quick peek at your stick on thermometer. If there's a problem with your heater, it's likely your pets will let you know anyways. I I'd recommend purchasing a temperature controller. Not only will it regulate the tank water temperature much more consistently, you can also set an audible alarm and even a push notification if the temperature gets too high or low. A temperature controller has saved my tank more than once. Moving on to our twice a week task. Yes, you heard me right. There's only one. Changing your filter sock. A study by Bulk Reef Supply showed that for optimal nitrate and phosphate reduction, a filter sock should be swapped out every three days. I have about eight filter socks, so I can swap a fresh one in and only have to clean them every three to four weeks. We've got a whole bunch of weekly tasks for you to do, starting with algae scraping the glass. I use this flipper magnetic algae scraper. The soft side will get the soft algae and the stainless steel scraper is great for hard algae, the edges, and along the sand bed. Just be really careful not to get sand between the algae scraper and the glass as it will definitely scratch the glasswork. Weekly task number two, feed the anemones. Once a week, feed your nems, which we already discussed in episode four. I like to do this before the gravel vac and water change so I can suck out any leftover food. Weekly task number three, dust the light. Dust your lights every week, not just for aesthetics, but also to make sure the heat can dissipate and your lights run more efficiently. Don't use any sort of cleaning product as that can get into your tank, rather just use a clean dry rag or spritz a little bit of RODI water onto the rag if you need a little bit extra cleaning power. Weekly test number four, water test. Once a week, I perform several water tests. I test the salinity to make sure I didn't make some sort of strange mistake. I then test for alkalinity as this will give me a good idea as to the calcium and alkalinity uptake by my corals and cleanup crew and whether I need to adjust or even start some sort of two-part dosing regime. Lastly, I test for nitrate and phosphate. These two let me know if I need to increase or decrease my feeding and or filtration. Water tests are easy enough to learn how to do, but it's a bit more difficult, especially for a beginner, to interpret and implement changes based on those results. I've made a whole bunch of videos on this topic on some other YouTube channels, but for now, just keep a log of the results so that you can see the trends inside your tank. Weekly task number five, gravel vac the sand bed. The fifth weekly task is to use a gravel vacuum to clean one quarter of your sand bed. Every week you'll do a different quarter, so after four weeks you will have cleaned the entire sand bed. Start by turning off the return pump and wave maker and get a five gallon bucket out. Start a siphon and let the water drain into the bucket. Press the vacuum into the sand bed and as the sand nears the top of the tube, pinch the flexible tubing to stop the flow of water, lift the vacuum off of the sand bed, wait for the sand to drop out, release the flexible tubing to restart the flow of water and repeat the process. Weekly task number six, water change. Gravel vacuuming your sand bed leads seamlessly into weekly task number six, performing a water change. 
Just keep draining water into your bucket until you've removed around 15%, then lift the vacuum out of the water. Make up a fresh batch of seawater, heat it to match the tank temperature, and add it to your aquarium. A weekly water change is the single best thing you can do for your aquarium. After the water change, weekly task number seven will come in handy cleaning the glass. I like to put some filtered water in a clean spray bottle and then wipe the tank down with a clean cloth. Just be sure to never use any Windex-like product. Getting any of that in your tank is not healthy. Stick with water here. It'll do the job just fine. Weekly task number eight, add Microbacter 7 and Coral Aminos to your tank. This is something I do because somebody I know and trust taught me to do it. I have no idea if it's necessary, but I do know that I really used to struggle keeping anemones, and now I don't. I simply add a capful of Brightwell Aquatics Microbacter seven and a few drops of coral aminos to the tank. If you already added coral aminos to your anemone or coral feeding, you can skip it now. Weekly task number nine, change out a baggie of activated carbon. In a small tank, I worry about different toxins, so changing out a baggie of activated carbon each week helps put my mind at ease. For this small tank, I put one tablespoon of ROX 0.8 carbon in a mesh bag, give it a quick rinse, and just plop it into the rear filtration chamber. Quarterly tasks. Every three to four months, you have one task to complete. Do a deep clean of your wave maker and return pump. Get out a bowl, fill it with hot water, and mix in either white vinegar or citric acid. Disassemble the pump and wave maker and let them soak in the acid bath for a couple hours. Then scrub them down with a brush, give them a fresh water rinse, reassemble and reinstall them into your tank. The link to the Hello Reef kit and all five videos in this series are in the description below. YouTube thinks you're gonna like this video, and until next time, be well and happy reefing, everybody.